Hello everybody, this is Jason Hires. Um, <clears throat> ah, got a little bit of a frog in my throat, I guess. Uh, today, this is another version of Essential Albums. I'm going to talk about a album that was released recently released. This is by Steve Earle, and this is an album called The Ghost of West Virginia. Here's the um, album cover, so you can get a good look at it. And... Um, so this album just came out recently, um, and let me talk a little bit about Steve Earle, if you don't know who Steve Earle is. Steve Earle started off as what you would consider to be an outlaw country singer. Uh, he's in the same vein of like a Johnny Cash, or like a Willie Nelson, or uh, along those lines. Uh, as his career progressed, and he went through a few things, he gradually became more, uh, he dabbled in folk and rock and roll, and so he's not just a pure country artist anymore. So he touches on a lot of different genres, which makes him a lot more interesting. Uh, so, but if you do like Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash and those kind of country artists, this is definitely someone you should look at, because he is a very good writer. He's a prolific songwriter. He puts out albums frequently. Um, part of this is because he jokingly says he has many ex-wives and he does have a son that has autism, so he does have a lot of medical bills. So that is one of the reasons why he gigs a lot, puts out a lot of albums, is because he actually needs the money, which I don't have a fault with that at all. Uh, and this particular album was inspired by a group that was creating a play called Cole County. So the story is that um, he, was he was asked by this group that wanted to make the play to write some songs for the play. And he did. And uh, from what I understand, based off of the liner notes on the record, that the first seven albums were all... Are the first seven songs i love to say songs and albums interchangeably for whatever reason but the first seven songs of the album were written specifically for the play which i guess had a run and i don't know if it's still out there you know with covid and everything going on lord only knows what's going on with that kind of stuff but anyway and then he added uh, three additional songs to kind of round out the album to give it a full ten tracks. Even though the album is definitely really short and sweet, it's ten tracks. It's, it comes in at like 30 minutes. So you kind of almost get left wanting a little bit more, but it is very focused, it's succinct, and it really does play on Steve's strength as a songwriter. Uh, the album starts off with Heaven Ain't Going Nowhere and Union God and Country and kind of establishes the themes of the album pretty early on. He does a variation of John Henry Was a Steel Driving Man and he modernizes it uh, and gives it a theme about like technology and unions and things like that. Basically, you know, what happened to John Henry when he basically died to try to beat the machine is kind of what happened to the coal miners when they brought the machines in. You know, it's like, well, the machine can do more work than you, you know, and you're out of luck. Uh, the strongest track on the album is called It's About Blood. And um, basically, this album specifically talks about an incident that happened uh, where 29 coal miners died. Uh, it was in... See, I thought I noted this somewhere, uh, like in 2010, somewhere in there. But anyway, and he really gets in there and really, you know, displays a lot of anger and a lot of frustration about the situation that led to that. He even, at the end of the song, names all 29 people that died in the incident. So it's a really powerful emotional song i mean you know he gets in there and he's like god damn right i'm emotional you know it's just a powerful song it's the powerhouse track of the album um and then uh and then at the end of the album he had he adds the extra songs and one of the more powerful tracks on that is black lung where he talks about the common malady for you know miners black lung because they breathe in so much coal dust it affects their lungs and uh 
you know, he has that really powerful illusion where he's talking about the shotgun looming in the corner. And, you know, like he's either going to shoot himself or shoot somebody else because he's dealing with the black lawn. So, you know, very powerful album. Uh, very, you know, very... Since it's all concentrated around a central theme, it's kind of interesting. And uh, if you haven't listened to Steve Earle, this would be a good place to start. Because it really touches on Steve Earle's diversity as a writer, but it's short and sweet. And the songs are really pretty focused. Um, and uh, so that's why this is a particularly good album for him. Uh, I guess the album was actually produced by Steve Earle himself. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And he uses his longtime touring band, which is called The Dukes. So... The album is actually billed as being Steve Earle and the Dukes, and the Dukes is the band that Steve Earle uses when he tours. Um, now, it's kind of an educational slash side topic that I like to throw into these videos, as I was going to talk a little bit about storytelling in songs. And uh, traditionally in country, uh, storytelling is a very big part of the songwriting, and Earl is definitely one of the better storytellers in songs. His biggest hit is probably a song called Copperhead Road, which is definitely a story. Uh, and I kind of want to talk about myself with storytelling and songs a little bit. So when I first started writing songs, uh, they were a lot more autobiographical. They were all about my life and my blah, blah, blah. And, but as I got older and I kind of got better at writing songs, more and more the songs just became stories. And, you know, I had a point in the song, and the story that I was using to demonstrate the point of the song was just largely made up. It was a story used to, uh, you know, drive home the point of the song. And that's kind of a lot of what happens in this particular album. There's a lot of songs that, you know, they're not really necessarily a real story, but... Uh, they're based off of things in real life, and the song uses the story to drive home the point really well. Uh, you know, the other thing is, is that the interesting thing about this particular album is every song is based around a narrative. So this album is almost a concept album in a way, because there's a central theme that unites all the songs and the stories of the songs together. Now, trying to write a, you know, trying to make a coherent story in a song is already kind of difficult to create a collection of songs that all kind of fit under like a grand narrative is incredibly difficult i mean even like the who's tommy which is you know considered to be one of the best theme albums there is there's still a lot of holes in the story and a lot of questions about what actually is going on in the story um and the other thing I guess I want to talk about is, you know, when you're writing songs, sometimes it's real easy to get a song together and it just comes out in a quick burst. Sometimes it takes a lot of time to develop. And, you know, if uh, you're like me, I still have songs that I have tried to write that I have sitting in a back burner. I have lyrics for them on a sheet or the chord structure, but, you know, I still haven't recorded them. I still haven't worked them. I may eventually bring them back or rework them, but uh, there was something about them I wasn't quite happy with, and that's why they're not completed. So you got to admire somebody like Steve Earle, who at times can make a really great story and turn it into a great song. The other thing about you know using music as a storytelling device is you know you got to come up with the right music to fit the mood of the story. So that the uh, the story which you have to write, which is really succinct because you're writing a song, you have to keep it really simple, is difficult. And then finding the right kind of music to underlay the emotional impact of the song that you're trying to get. Like, you know, you don't necessarily want a song about a heartbreak to have really happy, upbeat music. Like, like you know, like, you know like a like a girl you done me wrong song you know you don't really to have it you don't necessarily want it to have music backing it up where you know it sounds really happy and cheery and lovey you know you want it to be kind of frustrated and angry you know to do, to deliver the message of the song anyway i'm getting a little bit off point 
Uh, Steve Earle, uh, this album is really good. It's definitely worth checking out. It's a really quick listen, but uh, it is, you know, a good starting place if you've never heard Steve Earle before. Steve Earle uh, has many, many albums, and all of them have at least a few tracks that are really good. Uh, he's a little, because he puts out so much material, it's not, uh, some of the albums are better than others, so there's a little bit of unevenness between the albums, but that's to be expected for, for a writer that just, you know, consistently does output. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. My name is Jason. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Leave any comments. If you like any other story songs, let me know. And uh, thank you. Have a great day, guys.